so what I want to do now is we'll start with Phil. Look. Yep. Oh, God dang. I didn't say this government name. We're going to start with a. Uh, well, they know he now. We're going to start with Beast Flip 3, where I'm going to go around the table. 30 second immediate responses to what it was like when you first heard that uh, that Trump had COVID. Uh, I mean, I was kind of surprised, but also really, uh, didn't really seem like he was taking it to the first place. So I was kind of didn't wasn't he? I didn't catch all of the the debate, but wasn't he making fun of Biden for wearing a mask? And then this happened literally like, uh-huh. yeah. So I was kind of it was like clearly the man isn't taking it serious. So him getting it, I was just like, I'm not surprised. At first, I didn't I thought of the possibility that it was not true. But uh, after looking at Twitter like a few minutes ago, I think he was admitted to the hospital and they gave him the the uh, potential air quotes potential of care to see if anything happens. So, absolutely, yeah, Dario, how about you? Oh shoot, Darsta. Well, I mean, they got you. I don't care. I don't say you? My name is not here. Okay, whatever you say. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I still don't think it's real. Um, I tell I... us why. Expand on that. I don't want to say this, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's real for real if he gets hooked up to a ventilator and we, like, see a picture of it. But, like, it just seems so, it just seems so. Surreal? I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's the word I'm looking for. It seems so, um, like. Calculated. Not yeah. calculated. Not the word I'm looking for. Um, ooh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ah. Uh, we're gonna come back to it because I'm, I'm gonna be screaming when I figure out the word. But it's just like, it's just so favorable for him. Like, of course, you wanted to push back the election. Obviously, it's not gonna happen. But the fact that now that you have COVID and you're like 75, 70 years old, you're in high risk, you're hey, open. It's just very, it's just convenient. Thank you, Molly. Mm -hmm. It's that, very convenient. It took that long you find the convenient. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. Look. I sat wow, in a three-hour and ten-minute class this morning. My brain is fried. Mike! Mike, 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 Mike. Yeah, that's very interesting. So, according to what uh, Mr. Flip is saying, he said it was unbelievable, and Darsta is saying it was extremely convenient, and she herself finds it unbelievable, but in a very more, a very different, more literal way. Uh... And now, do you, Miss Jock? Also, no, Jock is uh, visiting us from Twitter, actually. She is the famous Jock Draws on Twitter. Uh, shout out to her. Everybody else, if you all have <laughs> if you all have any more, any uh, things you want to drop, please, by all means, drop them in the drop them in the Discord. Give yourself a shout out. You don't want to follow my Twitter. I agree. <laughs> so, yeah, Jock, tell us, immediate first-hand response. Like, where were you when you heard it on the ground? What, what, was, your, what was your immediate reaction? I found out from y'all. I like woke up and saw that y'all were talking about it and then I went immediately to, to Twitter to double check and I saw all the posts about it. At first I was shocked because I was like that like, like y'all previously said, it seems unbelievable and convenient. Also like having already like gone through the gauntlet of like experiencing the symptoms firsthand I I'll never say that I wish death on anyone but whatever symptoms he happens to experience I'm not going to be piteous about it. That was an interesting way to start that sentence. I never wish death on anyone, but, uh-huh, fun fact. <laughs> also, it is fair to note that uh, Jock, because she has explained that she has already expressed herself, she has had COVID, so she has experienced yeah. it before. Uh, my sister yeah. actually has my had COVID. My case was pretty mild. Oh, has she? Yeah, I, she, yeah. like, I Monday, I want to say, either last, this Monday or last Monday is when we find out that she had COVID, and so I have not had any symptoms. I live with her. Me and my mother have neither had any symptoms or anything like that, and so, and we've stayed away from her, so good on us, I guess, but uh, Liz, to you, Trump has COVID. You heard it. How did you hear about it? Why did you feel about it? I'm pretty sure me and Darsta were on FaceTime when the news broke mm -hmm. like i don't like i honestly didn't really think too much about it like yeah like he has covid okay so background i guess for why my point of view may have just cared a little a, a lot less i have a biomedical background i understand how the cases work most people don't have symptoms most people most of them aren't drastic and also the myth the, who he is as a person if his case was drastic you know no yeah. skin off my back 
Right. <laughs> so I was like, oh, he has COVID? Oh, that's cool. What am I eating tomorrow? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's not capitalism. I hear I that. Just, that. I think that that's my feeling about it. Like, I was like, you know, who we don't really know if his symptoms are drastic. Apparently, he's been put in the hospital, given baby aspirin. Yeah. But he's 70-something years old. There's a good chance he was already on baby aspirin anyway, because it's a common anti-inflammatory technique. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, I like my gut reaction was like the chances were already pretty high. Like and also he is rich. The rich mm-hmm. folks aren't the ones dying. Like, mm-hmm. let's look at the stats in any place in the country. The rich folks aren't the ones dying. He has doctors on hand. They aren't the ones dying. The poor folks are the ones dying. He's the ones also who the have president. To go to work even if they're sick. They're the ones dying. So mm-hmm. I literally, he has COVID, but it doesn't really matter if he has COVID because there's a good chance he has the doctors and the money to, you know, get the good treatment that he needs if needed. Like, they will leave him on dialysis, on ventilator for as long as he wants to be. Absolutely. And even if he weren't rich, he was also the president of the United States. Yeah. Which is not insignificant, you know. Yeah. Uh, And just so everybody knows, yes, Trump has been flown on uh, Marine One to Walter Reed Military Hospital. This is something that happened earlier, uh, earlier in the day. Or I'm not sure it just happened, but it was reported that he was going to earlier in the day. Um, And he's on a the doctors have prescribed him a combination of antibodies. They're experimental uh, right now just to see what it'll uh, see if it'll help or anything like that. As far as symptoms. Sorry. What'd you they say? Said, uh, they said a combination of antibodies. It's, it's <laughs> not just a combination. It's a cocktail of antibodies is what they said. A cocktail? I'm sorry. The science ain't vapid. Hey, man. Hey man, say man. Again, I am not a medical professional. Uh, Liz definitely is. She may know the implications of that, which I'll ask her about later. We'll definitely come back to that. But yes, he has been prescribed a cocktail of antibodies. They are experimental. Uh, he has been flown to Walter Reed Military Hospital. And as far as symptoms go, the last I heard, which is about four hours ago, which I mean, I'm looking at the live updates right now with CNN Politics. Mm-hmm. He does have symptoms, but they have been mild. Um, and so what I've heard, I was on uh, the NPR politics podcast earlier today, um, ah. this morning, actually. The last I heard about Trump specifically was that he was making attempts to work and that his staff is trying to get him to not work because he is fatigued and they don't want him to overexert himself. Mm-hmm. But with that, I really want to move on to lore underscore I, I, I um, code name to be determined at a later date. How do you feel about this? Well, his mic is muted, so I'll tell you. How do you feel about this? Oh, I'm back. Sorry if uh, the stuff was too loud. I mean, I went to bed smiling. I can't hear them. Tonight. Oh, can y'all hear me? The 200. I can hear you. I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Well, I was just saying, like, I went to bed smiling like, <laughs> it's really no skin off my back. I don't want him to die because I feel like he should suffer this problem. Mm-hmm. You know, like I want him to lose because he should lose, even though you know, very much a lot of this time. not to into my specific policies, but like, like it's, I don't think it's convenient, but I do think it will be taken advantage of because if he dies and he's a martyr, I think we would have an easier time with if he survives, then people are going to speak of him as a hero. If just his wife died, in any situation, I feel like he comes out on top a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I hope it's painful. I hope, it's painful. <laughs> I hope he lives for at least 20 more years with a lot of complication. I wish nothing but pain and horrible things for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just hope that it doesn't hurt you know, us, us being like the average citizen too much. Absolutely. And so uh, to summarize what Lorenzo is saying, uh, it is unfortunate in that something unfortunate and sympathetic is happening to a very unpopular person. At the very least, he's very unpopular in our circles. And so it is um, I'll explain to you. I'll have my reaction after when Somnia gives hers. 
Um, but part of part of my idea is that there are more ways that this can turn out poorly, not to be cold and calculating about this, but there are more ways that this can turn out unfavorably for someone like me than there are ways that it can be a victory. And so him catching COVID personally might feel good for a lot of different reasons, but there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a very complicated long play here. But first, I really want to get to Wynn's reaction. How did you feel about this when you first heard it? So when I first heard about this going on, I was I was actually just scrolling Twitter because I'm a Twitter addict because yeah, but um so we're all Trump Twitter addicts here. <laughs> yeah. We all. I saw this Trump COVID. I was like, is this another meme? But then I was like, oh, Trump has COVID, and I was like, not upset at all. <laughs> and I am I generally consider myself a very sympathetic person to a fault, mm -hmm. and I consider myself someone that again does not wish death explicitly upon anyone but in trump's case it's like i will be completely unbothered if you suffer and suffer and suffer some more because the type of person that he is <laughs> actions that he has done proudly like just him as not even as a shitty politician just as a human being someone like who just a racist, a sexual predator, and just like long list of attributes. I view him as pretty much subhuman. Hmm. If he kicks the bucket, the only, I feel like the biggest inconvenience would be that, okay, now we have to deal with Pence, who has some iota of competence. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, now would be a really good mo. Thank you. First off, thank you for that. And I don't, I don't have extremely different opinions. I must admit to say, uh, yes, Ali Twitter is jokes. I completely agree. Uh, I, I have to say though, this is not a group of people talking right here. These panelists, these are not people who like Trump. I am absolutely no different from them. I definitely, I am not a fan of Trump. I want to be as explicit and as thorough and as transparent about that as possible. However, if there's anyone in the audience that does have a more favorable opinion of the current sitting president, commander in chief, by all means, I've sent the link to the discord in the channel. Always feel free to hop in. Always feel free to share your opinion. I promise you, uh, I probably won't attack you for it. I'll say that. But must live in the United States. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, I, I don't know. I also think, you know, uh -huh. if you don't live in the country, the influence of that government is very different to you than very the different. U.S. So oh, your opinion yeah. matters very little. So where you live will determine how we receive your opinion. You don't have to be yeah. an American citizen to share it. It will just determine how much we respect it. So, but by all means, feel free to share your opinion. There's nothing I like more than when people disagree with me. Uh, that being said, uh, my immediate reaction is very close to all of yours, except the reason why, the reason why I didn't, I, I, under my breath, I uttered the word finally when I found out. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Not because I was waiting for him to catch it, but because I knew this was the end game. Way back in April, it was me and Luna, and we were talking, and during this whole COVID stuff started out, just a quick timeline for me. I graduated from my university December, Friday, December 13th. That's when I, that's when I finally walked across, the, well, I didn't walk across stage. I walked through the aisle. I didn't get up there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Friday the 13th in December was my last day of school. Monday the 16th was my first day at work at my current job. So I got a weekend off. It was, be would be until March 13th, another Friday the 13th in March, three months later. That would be my last day working in the office. I worked in the office for three months. I've been working from home for six months. So I've been working from home twice as long as I've been working in the office for my first job after college because of COVID. And I am not a unique situation. That is the same case for a lot of people, especially recent graduates. So I'm just saying like, uh, it's not, there, there really isn't anybody here who has not been affected by this. This is affecting literally everybody in so many different and so many related interconnected ways. I say that because it was in April. After I had been out of work for a month, Luna and I were talking about how long are we going to be in what we call quarantine? It's technically not quarantine because we aren't sick. It was more like isolation, but everybody was working from home, right? And so we were like, what, does, what exactly does this mean? How long is this going to last? What I said then was what's going to happen is that at some point Trump is going to catch COVID because by then we had already seen world leaders catch COVID. The president of Brazil has caught COVID. Boris Johnson caught COVID and he had a serious bout with it. I'm talking about he was in the ICU, right? 
other world leaders have caught COVID, right? Trump, it was not a matter of if, but a matter of when. I knew he was going to catch it at some point. And so I said, there is a, there is a set of situations here about how this is going to play out and how this is going to look. Nine times out of 10, if you don't like Trump and I don't like Trump, if you don't want Trump to win the election, this is not a good thing. The reason is not a good thing is because there are more situations where this works out favorably for Trump than there are if it works out unfavorably for him. Now, there is an argument that the one or two situations where this works in my favor are more likely than each of the ones where it doesn't work out for me. But if you add those combinations, it's really, really technical and complicated. What I'm saying is it's not looking good for me. And here's why. If Trump has COVID and he has no symptoms and he survives and he goes through and nothing's wrong, Trump will look like he is the strongest, most resilient warrior of a commander in chief and his supporters, especially his base, will rally around him. We've already seen it. We don't know anything really. And everyone around the world from Kim Jong-un to his base, to his daughter, to even Joe Biden, the Democratic competitor for the presidency, everybody is sharing their prayers and thoughts and whatever around him, right? Everyone already feels sympathetic for him. And then, and this is if nothing happened. If nothing happens to him and he doesn't suffer at all, everyone will consider him a strong leader. If the worst happens and he dies, I personally think that is the absolute worst case scenario, not just for the election, but for for democracy itself, because that will delegitimize the victory of Joe Biden. Then you will have people in Trump's camp saying that he's not the real president or that he only won because Trump wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Now, at this point, it is what's the date? October 2nd, Friday, October 2nd, 2020. Biden is pretty significantly ahead in the polls. All right. He is the he is the favorite to win this election, not by a long shot, but by a decisive margin. I'm gonna stop you there because Hillary Clinton was also said to be able to win the election, and she didn't win. And it's fair to note, though, Hillary Clinton still did win the popular vote by over three million votes. And so the electoral math is not consistent with the polling. And one of the reasons why. Trump won in 2016 is because he was a political outsider. He wanted to drain the swamp and he was not part of the swamp at that time. And you had a lot of silent Trump supporters. That same thing is still true. It is not true in at all the same to the same degree. The reason why is because now Trump has spent four years in Washington has become part of the problem. Number one, at least to a lot of different people's opinions. And so if Trump were to win, despite the polling numbers that we have coming out of Pew Research Center and 538 and all these other institutions, that would be not a miracle, but it would be a historic double anomaly for a lot of reasons that I don't think we have time to get into. But I will say if Trump dies, that's the worst case scenario, because everyone will rally around him as a martyr. Uh, The people, the most dangerous sector of his group, the white supremacists, the alt-right, the extreme right-wing conservatives, they will think that their one representative who had a chance to, to, to fight for their rights or their liberties or whatever has now been lost, and they will want to do something about it, something extreme. And I don't know what, I'm not saying they're going to overthrow the government and blow up the Capitol or anything crazy like that, but I will say it will be more yeah. dangerous. It will literally be more dangerous. What? I completely agree. Yeah, I'll, I'll, it'll be like it'll be between November yeah. and the inauguration election and uh, and inauguration, January 20th, 2021. It will be one of the most dangerous periods in American history since I think the Civil War or at least since like mm-hmm. McCarthyism, you know, since post-war America, like the early Cold War and all that, because there will be so much not just racial tension, not just political division in like a in like a typical sense. This will be extremely significant because now you have a sitting president who has died in office which has not happened since well, jfk i want to say mm. the last president got assassinated that's the last person to die in office this has not happened in any in the lifetime of most people alive now, i mean plenty of people were around to see jfk get shot r.i.p my <laughs> homies but like this guy <laughs> we have not seen this this is this is so unprecedented in an extreme way a president dying of natural causes in office, not through assassination. The conspiracy theories that we have right now, Darielle already mentioned that she doesn't even believe that Trump really has COVID. And I'm not blaming her or anything. She has a right to believe that. And there are so many reasons to believe something like that. The conspiracy theories from QAnon to right wing media and, and the news and all this will populate the sphere of social media so dangerously. It is incredible. But like, he's, but like the, 
from dying from natural causes would be a shocking thing if the man wasn't in his 70s. 74, yeah. Is, he's 74 yeah. years old. That's already the life expectancy for men in the United States. Like, at this point, him die like, okay, I, you know, maybe I sound unsympathetic, but, like, when people die at 70, 65 and above, I, like, I don't. You had a good I, run. I don't really, yeah, and, like, I don't really bring, I don't have very emotional response to that. Because I think at that age, you know, it's expected. It's not expected for you to die, but it's not shocking that you die. So, like, yeah. it shouldn't be too shocking that a 74-year-old died of natural causes. Like, 74-year-olds have heart attacks every day and never had a heart attack in their entire life. That's, that's just how the body works. Exactly. And so it's not like Trump is reaching his expiration date, but I mean, like, the clock yeah. is ticking for everyone, especially people that well, old. And yeah. I agree. Oh, go ahead. I agree with all of that, but, like, the thing is that, like, with just with, like, QAnon and stuff, it's, like, it, it's breeding grounds for conspiracy to an extent that we honestly have even saying something given the last year. Mm -hmm. I just, I feel like, I feel like, in a way, like, Trump is the dam between what the far right and Republicans want to do and what has actually happened. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, there's so, like, Trump is more of a wild card. And not just in the sense of, like, you don't know what but it's like he like if Pence were to become president we'd have a it's a worse enemy because we have someone mm. who is you know who's homophobic on purpose transphobic racist sexist on purpose who understands how he can harm people in a way that Trump never had and that's like a bigger threat and I feel like that's like that's the reason why I agree because like mm. Lorenzo saying for the last four years Trump loses support from Republican after Republican, not because they don't like how he believes or they don't agree with him. It's because they don't like the way he acts because he's not a politician. He's holding public office because he got elected, right? It's the first office he's ever held like that. You can't trust somebody that you can't predict, and that's just how the democracy works. And so senators and representatives and people all over the sphere of politics in Washington, D.C., they don't like Trump because they don't know what he's going to do. They can't support him, and they can't stand behind somebody who is an embarrassment to the party. Pence is all of those things but without all the drawbacks of him being an embarrassment. So, Darcy, what were you going to say? Let's be honest here. Pence has not been that great of a vice president. He's honestly nope. been a pretty weak spy uh -oh. vice president in terms of thinking of, like, the recent vice presidents. Mm -hmm. Like, even Biden was a better vice president than he is. But he stay off Twitter, and that's all that matters. You know, I guess. I don't think that's all that matters, but... <laughs> not the only thing, but what you saying, Darcy? <laughs> Go ahead. In the eyes of... If, that's, if that is all that matters, the bar is in hell. But, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Retweet. but what I was going to say was, if you Google October surprise, you will see, like, I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, right? Like, I don't believe in conspiracy theories, but like, this man has given me absolutely no reason to believe that all of a sudden he would just come down with COVID. Factual. If you Google October surprise, you'll see there's like a list during election years in October, right before an election, these big news stories will come out that will interrupt the election. Like last election with Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, I want to say it was the week the WikiLeaks. Them emails. Yeah. It, it was. I think it was a uh, uh, <laughs> director Comey, director uh, Comey of the FBI, and his announcement of the launching of an investigation or the continuation of an investigation. I believe in 2016. Yeah. So like, it always happens, and so like for this to happen October second, come on, like really. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, like, I'm not saying, no, I am saying, I don't believe the man has COVID. I'm sorry. Like, and that's fair. I will say history is so much of history when looking at it from the past is very clear cause and effect. And the rest of it is usually coincidence. It's no secret. It's no, it's not an accident that stuff happens in October. It's not like... I'm not saying Trump planned to get COVID or anything, and I'm also not saying he's lying about getting COVID. But you can control. It would, be, it would definitely be a better surprise than catching COVID, bringing an illness on your own candidate. Yeah, it's like, and it, the thing is, it was one thing to say that Trump caught COVID on purpose. It's another thing to say that he's lying about the fact that he doesn't actually have COVID. What is most likely is that Trump caught COVID, unfortunately, because he caught COVID before October happened, obviously. That's what I said. Didn't, he, didn't it happen earlier this year? Like yeah. It, like March, April, something like that? It, it like, I 
the current bout of COVID he's had at least for not a few days, but he caught it from uh, Hope. I can't remember her name, Hope something, but she's the she's the campaign aide who caught it, right? He's had it before mm -hmm. October. The thing is, Trump doesn't control when he catches COVID. Trump doesn't control whether or not he has COVID. Trump controls when we find out that he has COVID. And the only reason why we know that Trump has COVID is because of a leak. The mm -hmm. White House didn't announce this until Trump said that he was being tested for COVID when he was on the news live on TV because one of his employees was being tested for COVID that he's been in contact with. And then we later found out through Twitter that he and Melania Trump had caught in COVID. This is not coming from the White House. This is coming from Trump. Yeah. To be fair, they were supposed to get tested in, like on Tuesday before the debate. Mm -hmm. And because Trump's team arrived late, they weren't tested. Like they just went on an honor system that Trump and his team did not have COVID, which obviously was not true. And what? Yes, that's why I <laughs> Lord. And correct me if I'm wrong. I heard this on the, uh, I heard this on what I need to cite my sources. I believe I heard this on the NPR politics podcast this morning. Trump's family did not wear a mask at the debate when they were sitting in the front row Tuesday night. Everybody else in, in the center was wearing a mask, but they were not. And I think that is extremely significant. 15 feet away from Trump was Joe Biden and he and Dr. Biden have tested negative in their most recent COVID test. And so okay. it is important that we mention that. Oh, I love that you call her Dr. Biden. Sure, she definitely is. She's literally, if she stands on the stage with Trump, Joe, and my boy C. Wallace, she is the most qualified person to do pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Valid. You're right. right. When you say it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's that. And so one scenario is Trump doesn't suffer and he looks like a hero. That's awful. Trump dies and now he's a martyr also awful throw us into even more chaos that is that is a nightmare scenario because now you have a question of not necessarily i mean we know the 25th amendment and we know the presidential line of secession but i mean are they all of a sudden gonna elect donald trump does he get removed from the ticket i'm not really sure it's not like we'll be in a constitutional crisis there are safeguards in the republic for that i'm just not sure what happened i'll have to look that up and report back to you but when joe biden wins it'll be a problem it is close to the election that actually no one would get sworn in wait what like if he died, no one would get sworn in. Like the election, the way that like when someone dies, the election years and mo dates do not change, no matter what. No right. time ever is changed. It was during war, war, war a war, war, uh, world war, world war two. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. We got what you were saying. That's the only time it's changed. So like I yeah I definitely don't see them changing the dates because a world leader died like that's not that's not like if that happens they're literally causing a world war yeah like, they, that would be the stupidest thing to do actually now the states themselves I mean there there are provisions in place where the states can extend how when they accept it but they wouldn't be able to change the election date itself I mean if we have any lawyers by all means. Let me know if I'm wrong, but I do. But what I do understand at current is that they can allow for people to get votes later because there have been plenty of times through voter suppression, whether it's intentional or incidental, or especially with mail-in ball ballots and COVID, this is going to be such an unprecedented election in the way people vote, period. A million people have already voted. It's not election day, it's election season. If Trump were to kick the bucket there's no there's no reason why they wouldn't extend it by like a week or something we like that's hap that happens things do happen and in order for the democracy to function like voting the election is the maintenance of the republic and so they will allow for provisions for people to get their votes in either on that day or some other way i think <laughs> i think that as important as this story is like, it, like, I would argue that this is, like, one of the most important stories in the news cycle of the year. Yeah. But it's, like, there are so... But I feel like, especially with this year, if we go through so many stories. Like, we haven't even, like, touched the taxing. We haven't, like, we haven't talked about her, her but in this discussion about, like, in general, like, we haven't really gotten through with that conversation about his tax records or about right. Melania's comments from, like, the day before, from, like, yesterday. Yeah, about you know, Christmas. Like, yeah. You know, like, there really are, like... It feels wild thinking about like 2015 or 2014 we weren't like inundated with like truly like three or four like groundbreaking stories every like every when week. We I just feel like I, like I don't want people to take this. I want people to take this seriously. But I don't want people to take this so seriously that it's this only factor that matters. Even in like 
what Trump does. Like he literally said that he, like he already admitted that that he you know wouldn't you know denounce white supremacy this week. Mm -hmm. He already talked about how he wasn't willing or wasn't one hundred percent willing to like give up power peacefully this week. Like that was like no, it hasn't even been like seven days. It barely been three days. No, no, been like two days. like Honestly, yeah. In one hour, it will have been three days since that conversation started. It has not been a full 72 hours since Trump, the sitting president, refused and simply was unable to commit to a peaceful transfer of power. And, and to put this in context, when asked, Joe Biden said, whether I win or whether I lose, I'll respect it, that'll be the end of it. That's paraphrasing, obviously, but he said it that explicitly. Trump could not do that. The reason why I don't mind having one, two, three, what, eight people, how, seven, I can't count. The reason why I don't mind having seven people <laughs> on this panel and none of them be Trump supporters is because this goes beyond partisan politics. You know, it, it, it when, for, also side note, completely un unrelated. I don't like when people say they don't like to be political. What they really mean is that they don't like to be partisan and we'll discuss later mm -hmm. what's the problem with them calling things politics. Like they say politics so that they don't have to engage with it. Another conversation for later. Anyway, back to this. This is so outside the sphere of partisan politics when no matter who you like no matter what policies you advocate for it is essential and should be universal for whatever whatever official is in office whether at the local level i don't care if you're a county commissioner if you're on the tax board if you're on i don't know the water if you're the governor if you're the president anything every elected official is supposed to commit to a peaceful transfer of power when their time is done whether through term limits or they lose an election, whatever. That is supposed to be one of the few things that is consistent 100% of the time. That is supposed to work all the time. That is never supposed to fail. And the fact that the most power, arguably the most powerful person in the world, the leader of the free world and the president of the United States cannot commit to that on live TV should alarm every single American and really alarm every person in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think when I because I don't think this, this week is the first time he actually said that I think I definitely remember him saying that like a week or two ago and I was just like thinking about it I was just like yeah if Biden were to actually win the period between like the November and like January I think is when they actually uh, go in yeah lame duck session be a very yeah I was like that period is going to be so turbulent scary scary mm -hmm. it's just like I can't, I can't even imagine of like all the things that could or would happen during that point you know yeah. I feel like, mm -hmm. especially because, like, we're, or I don't know where everyone is, but like, the people that I was talking to before, like, we were like, well, we're in Georgia. Right. I know what California it is. California Liz, please. <laughs> How dare you? All right. <laughs> and it's like, you don't want to, like, be ruled by fear, but it's like, like, we've seen how tensions have shifted in the last years. Mm -hmm. Coronavirus is still very much a thing. You know, being a black person is still a thing. Mm -hmm. but, but, like, there are so many factors that go into just like our daily life, and as far as like safety, truly in like every sense of the word here. And it's like, like that's the thing that I'm most concerned. With, where it's like, mm -hmm. like should something happen, you know, really between November and like January, and you know, afterwards, it's like I don't have control, of it. and that's scary. Yeah, I agree. All of us yeah. have very strong reasons or strong attributes about ourselves that could be targeted. Yeah, I not only are we all black, but more than half of us are women. So Jesus Christ. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so when, so currently, president is the attorney general of the army, correct? He's the um, commander in chief of the military. Commander in chief of the army. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody roll that back. Somebody roll that one back. That was funny. <laughs> lawyer <laughs> but um, we get yeah, what you're saying no, yes mm -hmm. i hate the military i just want to make sure that's clear mm -hmm. um and, <laughs> no, uh, agreed upon <laughs> but like okay so he's currently commander-in-chief after does that so like is he still commander-in-chief you know until he lets go of being president or like i can't I sniper was... action can happen it's needed I am so glad that you asked that question. And so, oh. just because I'm broadcasting this on Twitch, I have to say, no one here is advocating for the death yeah, yeah. or assassination <laughs> no one, or no one. violence Absolutely not. of the president. All I'm, saying, all I'm saying is that uh -huh. the United States as a government has gone into other countries and yeah. done assassinations. So therefore, oh, this is a valid statement to make. Too much, I'm about to get off. <laughs> no, I, can't I mean, 
I can't be incriminated. <laughs> You're right. You know what? I, 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 will, I will back off. I will back off. I will just say it one more time. I hate the military. And then give fine. me my money back. I, I, I want to let everybody know right now that I do snitch. So if somebody's on my door, I do snitch. Okay, so <laughs> I believe to to qualify what Liz is saying, yes, we all know that at especially at the height of the Cold War, the CIA went into various countries, especially through Latin America, uh, and sponsored coups where they would give money to rebels, m money and armor, uh, excuse me, money and weapons to uh, rebel forces so that they could overthrow the government in what they called an attempt to stop the spread of communism. It's well documented, it's not a conspiracy theory, it's a conspiracy fact. It's not like that th type of thing doesn't still happen. And so, uh -huh. just gonna let that out there, we're not crazy for saying this, it's just a thing that you have to accept is a part of the American political process and a part of our foreign affairs policies. Moving on though, to answer your question, Liz, excellent question. Nobody knows the answer to what happens if Trump refuses to relinquish the office of the presidency. It literally has not been done before. It is unprecedented. It would be a constitutional crisis. Technically, if Joe Biden wins, he will be the president elect until he is sworn in or excuse me, inaugurated on January 20th, 2021. But he's not the president until then. He is still the commander in chief of the military. And it is still the responsibility of the Department of the Treasury and the Secret Service to protect him at all costs. A lot of people speculate that it would be the Secret Service who would have to forcibly remove him if he literally like chains himself to the Resolute desk or something crazy like that, you know what I'm saying? Like he lay down there, covered himself in butter, butt naked, and just like, I'm not leaving. I'm not saying that wouldn't happen. <laughs> Look, man, this is my, this is my head cannon, it's my fan fiction. Listen, if this man, <laughs> if this man get butt naked, cover himself, and I can't believe it's not butter, and slide all over the Oval <laughs> Office, and says, look, man, this is my office. I've been here for four years. I'm not letting go. You ain't got no rights. People think a lot. There are people who believe it would be the Secret Service. I don't think it would be the Secret Service. I do think it would be the military. For the Mike, Mike said he could have it at that point. Look, <laughs> really, but we'll build it. We'll make another one, bro. We got we got plenty of space in the office, bro. We'll go across the street, bro. It ain't even that big of a deal, bro. It's yours. You got this. But I don't think it would be the Secret Service. Um, civic, quick civics, fun fact, not fun fact, point of, or I don't, port of flagrification. The military Secret Service, not the same thing at all. The Secret Service works for the Department of the Treasury. The main focus and the main directive of the Secret Service is not to protect the president. They chase counterfeit bills. They are a law enforcement agency and they're supposed to make sure that our money is doing what the money is supposed to do. That is their job. They also protect the president as a little side gig, you know, a little weekend thing for some extra change. That's also what they do. That's the president's right. detail. The military, a entirely different department that's run by the Department of Defense. Uh, and so the Secretary of Defense, Joint Chiefs of Staff, all of those, National Security Directive, that's all, you know, that's all the military. Trump is technically the leader of both because he is the head of the of the uh, executive branch of government and they're both in the executive branch. But it's not like, you know, you can't have people legally remove, like if Trump stays there after he's been uh voted out he has broken the law so it might even be capital police you know it doesn't even have to be the military it could be capital police from dc who come in there and be like you're literally trespassing get out of this room you know what i'm saying Why? so i mean you know yeah I, I i will take this opportunity real quick though what's up snorlax i will take this opportunity though liz i mean not liz luna had a really interesting will you perspective. ever get our names right no not ever no. so don't expect oh, I, it and so <laughs> i was saying uh it would be i know how it would be so satisfying for people who hate trump to see trump get literally dragged out in chains because he's trespassing and he lost the election and everything and i say that would be awful because that would that would be such a a terrible thing for the republic and by the republic i'm just the united states for democracy itself when you have to remove a sitting president or the leader a democratically elected leader refuses to leave office that is not a good thing at all that is terrible luna actually has the exact opposite opinion she thinks that if the cops have to come in strap this man trump in, 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 a, in, a, in a life vest or something and then throw him out the window and he lands on a bouncy house and they're like we got him out and then biden comes in <laughs> you know on his little on his little uh hover scooter uh what they call that thing the little hoverboard or whatever you know just rolling in saying it's pokemon crazy. go to the polls or something stupid like that <laughs> <laughs> luna thinks <laughs> luna thinks that that will be the absolute best example of democracy working 
and I don't disagree. I don't have the same opinion, but I I think I think she's really she has a really interesting point by saying so the force hard. removal. I think of you're the both right. So I really want to hear y'all's opinions on that. What are you saying, Liz? Sorry, my friend is here. I'm gonna mute for a little bit. Oh, you go ahead. So Phil, I say it's terrible for the democracy if we have to remove the president. Luna says if we gotta kick that man out by force, that means it's working. What do you think? I think you're both right. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, dude, like, it, it, in, in practicality, it's like, yes, it actually, it would be good. But at the same time, it's like the people that would get pissed off by it or, or like really upset by it and want to act on it would probably get pissed off by it and get upset by it and act on it. So. Yeah, that would be dangerous. Yeah. Darsta? I mean, honest, mm -hmm. at this point, though, it does kind of feel like. And I don't want to say that it's going to happen regardless, but it does kind of feel like it's like, you know, like they're, they're going to find a reason to want to do it and do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Darsta, you had something? I what? Never mind. All right, go ahead, Lori. <laughs> okay, so let me process it. I'm not an accelerationist in any sense of the word, mm -hmm. but I, I totally agree with you in the sense that, like, I mean, we haven't really seen in the last four years a whole lot of proceed. You know, like there's been like I do feel like since the you know the elections like like uh, two years ago, that was like the last like series of wins for democracy. And I feel like like I'm of the belief like we're not we're not a democracy like we're a democracy on paper. Uh, you know, our we we haven't been we've been in war for our entire history besides like 16 years. We have so much imperialism, truly any any direction you want to look. Like, I don't, I feel like even now, so many people are still holding on to this idea that we're the good guys in this very elementary school. Are the baddies? Say that again? Say more time. I agree. Oh, okay, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. One somebody we haven't heard from you in a while. What are you saying? Oh yeah, sorry, I was gone for a bit. No, it's just like mocking the greatest country in the world propaganda that we have going on in the States, but also like seeing Trump dragged out and changed, as you say, like on one hand, it'd be like, yay, power to the people. But on the other hand, it's like, how did we get here? How did we get this thing elected? Yeah, man. <laughs> it's also like, like you were already saying. here. And yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to. And that's, what, and that's why I say, that's why I say that, that you're both right because of what uh, Tony said. Um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like worst case scenario of Trump losing, and I think what is fearful for like a lot of people, especially people who are, like, I feel like the people who would consider themselves democratic haven't been as united, not in like government, but like as average citizens, they've never been so united against one thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid that like, if this quote unquote blows over, people are just going to want to back to Normal. normal being like you know like like trump is obviously a problem but the majority of the things he's done are only made possible by things that were established well before he was the president you know like ice was still a problem before he was president you know all of our racist and sexist policies were very much present and i don't want people to lose sight of him that's my that's my fear and i i do think that like i i agree with luna's point of view I do feel like him, seeing him drag out the chain, I feel like is a better symbol to the people where that symbol matters to them than if he were to just like not happen, you know? Yeah, I, I feel like that entire thing, like if Trump, assuming Trump loses, him getting dragged out versus him walking out peacefully is such an interesting, it's very, it's very uh, analogous to does Trump survive covid you know, without issue, or does he suffer from it and then loses, or does he suffer from it and wins, you know, all that other stuff. It's like, there are so many branching ways for this to go, and each has their own, you know, section of, of benefits and drawbacks and all that. I do have to ultimately agree that it would be satisfying for the common man, or what I'm assuming is the common American's perspective, if they don't like Trump, to see him dragged out because the law works and the Constitution did its job and said that you can't be here anymore, that's showing that even when somebody like this is in office, a tyrant, a demagogue, an autocrat, or whatever, even if he, this happens, 
we will still take care of it. The system is still designed to work in case of something like this. This, and so I was. There was some article I was reading. It was after the um, after the debate on Tuesday, and someone. It was from the UK. I'm drawing a blank on who it was, but it was from the UK and it was an article and they were saying democracy is like a tree and they were asking, does it, does it, when it bends, does it snap back, you know, and go back into place or does it break? And because we have not seen this situation yet, we have no idea what it's going to do because there are just some situations that have never come up. So there is no precedent for it. <laughs> precedent. Here she go. Listen. <laughs> I, I would like to I like if, if Trump gets dragged out, that will prove that even in the worst situations, it works. And so like Trump suffers through covid survives long enough to lose decisively, refuses to leave. And then we drag him out. In my personal opinion, that's the best case scenario. I OK, um. I, I I I don't know if that's the best case scenario. I feel like we're already really embarrassing and that's just gonna be even more embarrassing. It will be embarrassing, but it'll prove that what happens here, at at least in the in the smallest sense, this is an anomaly. This is a glitch, not a feature. And the, the country reacted to the news. I can see that. I I, I do feel like that is the best to support that. I'm not sure that that is a true statement, if that makes sense. Say, uh, explain what you mean by that. Like, I feel like, like, if he gets taken out, like, from Secret Service or the most whatever, like, drag down changes, like, that is great for, like, you know, for your headline. For the revolution. Twitter will have a, you know, Twitter will have a but I don't know if that symbol is true, you know? Like, I don't know if this is a... Like, I wouldn't say that this is just a fluke. Mm -hmm. I think it feels like that, but I feel like, like, him getting elected, yeah, sure, to some extent. But, like, all the other factors that empower him have empowered him. And, you know, moreover, you know, really all the other people he works with, people he has in his cabinet, those issues are not solved. And I don't want people to think the problem is solved before it is. I completely agree. And it, that really does echo your thought that, like, Trump is really, if Trump is ever good at one thing, he is showing the worst of America's current problems. So, I mean, if I want to be a conspiracy theorist, and God knows I am, you know, when it, when the clock strikes 3 a.m., I'm up on the keyboard typing. Don't ask why I type it. Just don't worry about that. Anyway, <laughs> when it's late at night, I do be thinking, I'm like, hey, man, what if, what if Trump been a Democrat for the last 60 years? And, I mean, despite the fact that he is responsible for the deaths of so many people, what if... What if, what if he is a deep state, I'm talking about a super undercover agent of the Democratic Party who only got elected to expose the worst parts of this country and then show you that he's awful so that he can bring us all together? That'd be something. Yeah, I'm smoking I crack, obviously. That'd be something, it'd be something whether that's a good thing or not is... Yeah, that is the worst way to do anything good. If you kill a hundred people on the way to save ten, you've messed up. See, that's what we we're talking. About. That's what I was saying about like, acceleration. Where it's like, ooh, I don't know if I like that theory. Um, yeah, I mean, like if you find the if you find the cheat code to get into that timeline, you know, hook me up. Like you know, my Discord phone number. But <laughs> I don't know about all that. I agree. I agree. And now I really want to, this is a really good segue because we're talking about, we talked about COVID and Trump and we've talked about Trump himself and, you know, the democracy is in a state of emergency, essentially. I want what European countries are being done right now too. You guys aren't embarrassing on your own. Oh, thank you. Ali, uh, Ali Gobson, 98. He's from Scotland. Uh, he wishes us well. He we says, yeah, every we're not. Don't listen to Darsta. She's crazy. Anyway, but I will say this: there are a lot of issues at play right now. A lot of there's. This has been such a good year for news in the worst way, obviously. Um, don't want to trivialize anyone's suffering, but there are a lot of things going on. A lot of these things relate to the election, and a lot of these things relate to Trump. It's very hard to distinguish all of this. Something that I personally really want to take the time to because I know there's the issue of COVID. I know there's the environment. I know there's there's constitutionality. I know there's Supreme Court justices, but something that I just really want to talk about while we have the chance with this panel is law and order. I really want to understand your immediate reactions to the concepts of the different 
ideas behind law and order from defunding the police to a riot versus a protest to black lives matter all lives matter blue lives matter no lives matter all lives splatter whatever man i really want to hear your immediate reactions to like what what's the question here the question here is what role does law and order play in the 2020 election and i want to start with winsomnia Ah, uh, man, it's just like the law itself. It's just like the people enforcing it clearly are in favor of a specific demographic and just it, 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 it's all screwed, man. It, it, it's all screwed. Like we, we need to look at the books, rewrite the books, tear down the shits so we can fix it. Like blue lives do matter. Blue lives being the USPS. <laughs> retweet same. hashtag same there, i i can't even words there's just shit man mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i'm gonna jump right to to jock uh your reactions please repeat the questions <laughs> what role in your opinion what role does law and order play in the 2020 election oh goodness This is my uh, this is my audition to join the uh, NPR politics podcast. This is how I get in. <laughs> I mean the enforcing of it, or just the idea I of mean... law enforcement, the idea of a protest. What is a riot in comparison to a protest? Black Lives Matter. Does anybody's life matter? I really want to hear your thoughts. Mm. Right now, the fact that people, the fact that there have been riots going on for the past. God, how many months has it been? We're going on to month nine. Mm -hmm. yeah. The bulk <laughs> of the riots started back in June, however. Yeah, yeah. So it was like right before Juneteenth. June, July, September, October. Like four, we're going night. into four months of global, global rioting and protesting. Not even just the fact that. It, it's being glazed over so severely now. And, and I sort of get it because literally every day some new big thing happens and people are becoming desensitized to it. But that doesn't negate the fact that this should have been handled, this could have been handled differently. Yeah. More, yeah, that's, that's all I have. <laughs> I agree. It could have been handled more efficiently. Uh, it just was not. Uh, the, to, just so everybody's aware, Phil was really touching on the timeline here. I just want to make sure everybody knows the dates. Ahmad mm. Arbery, uh, you could argue, is the beginning oh, of this. Yeah. His killing mm -hmm. is not only the beginning. The the release of his killing, the release of the video of his killing, what you could argue is the very beginning of this mm. current wave. Um, that happened. He Ahmad Arbery was killed on February twenty third, twenty twenty. Breonna Taylor was killed March 13th, 2020. George Floyd died May 25th, 2020. The riot, mm, they almost caught me up. Protest. The protest, excuse me. The, the, what happened? It went down early June. So it wasn't, it was barely a week after we saw the footage of George Floyd. It was really the day I saw the footage of George Floyd. And I'm not sure mm -hmm. if, it, if it was released or anything, but eight minutes, 46 seconds, that's how long the yeah. cop was on his neck. Uh, Breonna Taylor, as you all know, killed in her own home, shot several times, uh, no knock warrant, all of that. And then that that's currently ongoing situation. I mean, all of these are ongoing situations. Ahmaud Arbery, mm -hmm. that incident, he was killed by a former officer and his son running through a neighborhood or whatever. And this happened, this happened in our home state of Georgia. Like that, mm -hmm. all of this is happening now. Yeah. Then the protests start in early June. Uh, this was like prior to Juneteenth. For those, if you don't know Juneteenth, that's mm -hmm. June 19th. Um, this is the timeline. This is a very rough timeline of what became a, a, a summer, I would say, an entire season of, of racial reckoning is what a lot of pundits have called this. Feel. Just in the U.S., but globally. Yeah, that's a very good point, Jocelyn. This has really been the largest... I, I, I have to fact check this. I have to fact check myself. Do it if you can. The world, the largest racial protest in the history of the world happened in June. And I'm not sure if that's like a date. It's like a, it's like an array of things. It's yeah. really something. And so, Phil, I want to ask you the same question I'm asking everybody else. Now that we know the timeline, we know how large this was. What role does this play in the election? Before I get into that, I just want to point out that it is kind of insane that 
the Brianna Taylor incident happened back in March, and we, just people have just been fighting and pushing for justice for that since then, only for the result of what happened to, you know, to have happened. It's really, it really has been since March. That's, yeah. It's insane. And the grand jury decision came out not a week ago, I want to say. Now, today, today the grand jury did release the court uh the grand jury recordings that happened today the uh yeah. the decision happened i want to say a few days ago but i have to get my dates exactly right but it happened it didn't happen more than two weeks ago it's just very recent and that she died all the way back in march uh the only three officers were involved in her killing the only officer charged was charged for wanton endangerment i want to believe yeah, um that's and it was for shooting shots into her neighbor's apartment so the only person that got charged with anything was for not shooting Breonna Taylor. If all the shots hit Breonna mm -hmm. Taylor, nobody would be charged with anything. The bullets that missed her are the ones he's being charged for. I also want to say, like to, to add on to that, um, you would think that like during this movement, it would have like pushed police officers and law enforcement to straighten up their act, but it didn't. Like got worse. It happened. It, it got so much worse. Like Rashard Brooks, didn't mm. that happen a few days after um, George Floyd, or a few weeks after George Floyd? In and the like, city of Atlanta. Like it was mm -hmm. happening. There were protests going on, and like down the street, this happened. Like it, I don't know. You would just think would that. Think... Sorry. What'd you Go say? Ahead. I was just say like, but they don't have an incentive to change because. So to answer your question about law enforcement, see what law enforcement is like right now. If they made it, yeah be able to do what we saw it in March and before that. You know, like we like we see what laws are being used and who is subject to them. you know, we see who is deserving of protection. We see you know, we see who gets who gets to yell and spit in the face faces of officers who don't want to wear a mask versus who is gonna be killed just for existence. We see it over and over again. Like how many times do we need to see the way in which laws are valued and contributed to for people to get it. I don't mean not to shame anyone, but I but I feel like like we understand that like these are that is valued the most and not the order of like happiness, but like order as in like like these people are out there to protect their property. They're out here to protect whatever little thing they can hold to and maintaining their power. That is their priority and I feel like that's something to really, really understand. Because like you see the way like it really, you know, not that it can't get worse, but like it hasn't been this bad in our lifetimes, and we still see these people acting up because they're not acting up; they're protected. Like this is just what they do. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Kenshin, uh, Kennesota, excuse me, Wisconsin. Uh, mm -hmm. And that guy's name, I'm gonna have to look his name up right now. But I will say another fun fact, Dar, uh, Dar Star, I'll let you continue real quick. Uh, they have been protesting for 128 days straight over Breonna Taylor, 128 days straight. It was 100 days. It was 100 days uh, on September 4th. That was exactly four weeks ago to the day. Like, that was four Fridays ago. It has been 128 days of nonstop protests in the streets for the killing of Breonna Taylor. Do you hear about it as much now? Absolutely not. Of course you don't. No. But it has been 128 days of nonstop protest. And today, October 2nd, when she was killed, dang, I just forgot the date. She was uh, killed uh, March, let me find that out, March 13th. It is October 2nd. It has been 100, 128 days of protest, and now they're finally releasing the recording of the grand jury that did not find any officers guilty or responsible for her death. Just a number I want to put that, run by that real quick. Darcy, if you would continue, please. I'm keeping real with you. I don't remember what I was talking about. That That is okay. <laughs> That's the way it works. I, it's just, I, it's so, it's, mm, yes, there's a lot going on there. Um, and so I, I will, I would like to, while we still have these last 30 minutes because the game about to start and you know, me and Darcy, we're oh, going to wow. be busy. Uh, I, huh? Huh? No. Anyway, so I will say this. <laughs> we've all, we've spoken about COVID. Uh, what's one thing I really want to talk about? Okay personal thing this is this is a topic that i feel like does not get enough coverage it is covid which clearly gets enough coverage because it's every single day a running update all the time but there's a specific aspect of covid that i feel like is just not 
covered enough. And that is faith over fear. What do I mean by that? People who choose to not wear masks because they feel like their lives are in God's hands, whether or not that's true or not is based up to your own personal belief system. I'm not saying that God ain't got you. I just want to know why would you wear a seatbelt? Why would you study for an exam? Why do you drink water if ultimately you don't decide if you live or die? I'm wondering why is COVID the exception? And I really, I am desperate to hear your thoughts. And I want to start with you, Lorenzo. Okay. So I thought, I've honestly thought about this a lot. And <clears throat> I can't remember where I was. I was just talking about like the way which people, when you have no sense of control, anything that you have power over is something that will be used. And you see that with like the way people like to their children, right? but also just like the way that somebody will like go in and like tear up bathroom of the gas station. Something that they have control, and I feel like not wearing a mask that one look, that people can have some can have some say. In, you know, the evil big government can't tell them everything. You know, their job might suck, and their life their life might suck. You know, they might be screwed forever, but at least they can you know, find a something of control. That's my that, that's, that's my thought. I'm not. I can't really back that up. That's my that, that's out of my mouth. Okay. And uh, Darsta, I'm be honest with you. I didn't hear what he said. I, I told you I can't hear him. <laughs> I, <laughs> I forgot. Okay. I forgot about that. He, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Jocelyn. What, what, what do you think? What do you? How do you receive what Lorenzo was telling us? Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm in the same boat. It's very much. Well, I'm already inside of a burning house. I don't have to set myself on fire. Mm. Um, except that I that I myself am on fire. Um, oh my! The whole, <laughs> yeah, the whole idea that like there's this one little thing that I can control whether or not it, it's actually good or bad that I'm doing it by not wearing the mask. People assume that they're saying um, government can't tell me what to do. I'm an American <laughs> citizen, which is by itself a contradiction. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny. That's funny. Um, I will say before we, we get into we've it, we've been fed so deeply the idea that we're exceptional that it comes back to bite us in the ass. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Factual yep. statement, and there is a masculinity angle. There is an idea that people, that men especially, are somehow masculine. Uh, and ma I'm not. I can't say the word. Masculinity. Yes, they lose their masculinity because they wear a mask. Something I I right. cannot continue this conversation without mentioning that strange fact. Uh, but I really want to go back to you, Winsomnia. Um, people who don't wear a mask because they're so confident in their faith and that their faith will protect them. How are we supposed to navigate that? I don't really know, man, because I'm like, I love Jesus as much as anybody else. Mm -hmm. But like, like, you know, my, my take on it is like religion wise, like, yeah, you're always going to have whatever deity you may look to or worship like at your side but they're not gonna do all the work for you you have mm. to put in mm. at least some effort on your end to right. kind of like a relationship like you both gotta put in an effort to make it work and as someone who is immunocompromised and therefore at risk i'm just like especially personally offended by people who just disregard the safety of others and choose Constitutional rights over just like being decent. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go Can ahead. Get back off of this. Yeah, absolutely. Say, um, first of all, I want to say that everything that Lorenzo and Jocelyn said is absolutely correct. Uh, and for me personally, I feel like it's kind of goes down to two different things where it's either a, a lack of wisdom or a, a mistakenness of having calling it faith, but it actually being fear. Um, and this is kind of for me because, you know, like, you, you know, I'm a very like I've been Christian all my life and I really take that seriously. And it's something that like I'm always questioning, not questioning, but I'm always like ch uh, challenging because there's so many different like perspectives and viewpoints and how Christianity has been used over history and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, when I see that people are saying, oh, God's got me, I'm not going to get COVID. I, I see it as either of like 
a lack of wisdom or mistaking using faith, uh, uh, mistaking faith with fear. With the lack of wisdom, it, like it's it is good to have faith. You know, it's good to believe that you know this disease isn't going to touch you or your household. That you're going to be fine. That you know this isn't going to come towards you. But it's not just a faith situation, and not all situations require faith. Some situations require wisdom, like the wisdom to listen to what you know to wear a mask to uh, isolate not go out as much to you know stay six feet apart and and the reason why i feel like people are ignoring that wisdom is because of the fear of just like once you once you put on that mask or once you start like uh isolating and distancing and everything it makes the situation more real and it's kind of hard to believe that so much that, that this evil can happen especially coming from the perspective of like you're a Christian and you know, no weapon formed against you shall prosper and everything. And it's like, you know, it, 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 you, it, it, I feel like they see it as like, oh, well, if I put on a mask, if I do six, uh, six feet apart, then I don't truly believe that God can protect me from this virus. That is the craziest thing I have ever heard in my life. I don't- It's a really good point that Phil brought. Yeah, go ahead, Darcy. <laughs> It's a good point. Yeah, I mean, I, okay, I didn't grow up really religious, but mm -hmm. it's just the fact that, I don't know, I feel like in my head, I would see like, if God gave you a mask and God gave you the knowledge to know how to keep yourself safe, then there is a little bit of responsibility on you to do it too then. Like, you just can't leave it all up to God. I don't know. I, just, I agree. Yeah. That's, I that's, agree. That's crazy to me that people, like that's like the justification that people use that if I do this and I don't trust God, I'm just, just me. It, it's, it's, the, it's, it's definitely, it's the fear of it. It's just like, the, it's just like, oh, it's just like, oh, this man is telling, like, man, like air quotes, it's like, you know, men instead of like God is telling me to put on a mask and, you know, six feet, uh, you know, stay six feet apart from people. They're going to just be like, oh, does that mean that I don't trust God or do I not really believe in God and this and the other thing? Obviously, of course, you're going to have people that are doing it just to just, that are saying, you know, faith over fear just to justify them not wearing a mask because they don't want to. But I, I think it's also that, like, you know, people don't want to go to that place where they're questioning their religious beliefs because then it's just like, because, you know, it's... That's a very uncomfortable place to be in. That yeah, Christians believe that the only way to get to heaven is to believe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be put in a place or a position where you're questioning that faith, it's just like, oh, well, is that going to just mess me up in the afterlife? And, you know, this and the other thing. And it's, it's complicated, I feel. I completely agree. Um, like, I, I feel like you really articulated and verbalized something that I've been unable to really express, Phil, in that, mm -hmm. like, to say faith over fear is an expression of fear itself. Because mm -hmm. it's 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 if, if it's like if you were so confident that you would be OK, then what's the harm in putting on a mask? You know what I'm saying? Like if right. even if it's just through the social pressure, like I I have to admit, y'all, it was about a month into this fiasco until I actually started wearing a mask in public. And I started mm -hmm. wearing a mask because of social pressure, not because I thought it was good or anything. I was never an anti-masker. I was never like, oh, the virus ain't gonna do nothing to nobody, but we gonna be all right, you know what I'm saying? When it first started, it was March, it was the first Monday, it was, so it had to be the 16th. Monday, March 16th, I did have a conversation with a lot of my friends and say, coronavirus is technically nothing new like the common cold is a version of coronavirus i was doing my best for people to not think the world was ending because the world usually ends when people make it so and i didn't want people to panic not to sound like trump or anything but yeah. it was just as i kept going as, as things as i learned more you know what i'm saying it is not a crime to change your mind it is admirable for people to change their mind and their perspectives and i did not start wearing a mask because i was like man i gotta do my part you know what i'm saying I'm, I'm hurting people no i did it because i was like i'm the only one in here not doing it that alone got me to do it i was walking through aldi bro looking for some chicken nuggets or something and i was like bro everybody up in here masked up man. i'm like bro i was like I'm, i need to tighten up and so i put a mask on and i was talking to phil Phil changed my mind on it in an instant. He asked me, have you not been wearing a mask? And at that moment, in that moment, he sent that text. I had to challenge myself to find a reason why I had to say no. Like I couldn't come up with a good reason as to why I wasn't wearing a mask. And from that moment, I have never taken, I'm not gonna say I've never taken it off. You know, I, I take showers every now and then, but it's like, I have never left the house without a mask on since then. To the point where you're almost 
like I have literally like ran back into my apartment because I've forgotten my mask. Exactly. Right. I keep like, some I in my car, man. I was one of the first people in my family to like that. I I can't remember how I started getting comfortable with wearing it. I think because a lot of the people that I follow mine were like very vocal about wearing a mask during this time, and I was like, okay, I can do that. And it took me a while to convince other members of my families to take that seriously. Like for mm. them, it was a lot of social pressure. Yeah. I think hit me yeah. first and then sort of as time went on, it, it became less of a, a, a thing that's personally uncomfortable, but more of a thing that's like socially acceptable. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I think exactly. That, I think that there were like two points really for me when I was just like really pushing for people to like wear a mask. It's like one, when everybody was like mask buying like toilet paper and everything from like the stores. Mm -hmm. Like I literally, I went to work or I went to like a Sam's after work, like a couple like I think like that week before uh we were quarantined and everything and it was nearly impossible at a Sam's to get like toilet paper and paper towels and this that and the other thing and I remember like stocking up my fridge and freezer and everything with food because I was thinking that like oh this is like super serious and I think after that I think my aunt's mom caught it mm. because like I, I think like my main family members were like taking it seriously but not taking it seriously but like as soon as I heard that like my aunt's mom caught it that's when I was just like, okay, no, we are, I'm making sure like all my friends and family are good, that we are wearing a mask, that we're staying inside, that we, you know, we are taking this 100% seriously. Because I heard at that point, like, it was really messing, like, she was, she, uh, she made it through, but she was definitely feeling, feeling hard, for sure. Yeah, my so, grandmother's think, friends have died yeah. from it. Yeah. I think same here, actually. Yeah. yeah, so shout out to Phil for uh, maybe saving my life. And the lives of people <laughs> that I that I could have affected, you know, his it was as simple as Phil asking me, uh, have you not been wearing a mask? He didn't even ask me why. He didn't even ask me why I wasn't wearing a mask. He just asked me, Have you not been wearing it in such a way that inferred that he expected me to have been wearing it? Leaving yeah, the grocery store. Like <laughs> leaving <laughs> leaving the grocery store with being the only person without a mask on, having saying that to feel like, man, I might wear a mask because everybody else is wearing one. And then he says, Have you not been wearing a mask? That got me by itself. It and, and everything else, everything I heard from that point forward was just icing on the cake. More reasons that I should have been wearing it in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like I forgot who mentioned it except maybe Jeff. But I feel like that's also a big factor. Not even like separate from conversation on the but I feel like so much of like our identity, especially to like further along the right, on like mm -hmm. spectrum regarding like, identity, it's like there's like this like you're simultaneously so free that you can do whatever you want, but everyone else must follow these right? And I feel like, you know, that's something that's hard to reckon with. That, like, American exceptionalism is, is like, it's in the veins. It might very well be the veins of society. And that's very hard to reckon with before you even get into the way that overall religion and faith. faith. Like, my, like, my opinion of, like, this year, both as far as, like, the election and the coronavirus, that none of these problems are new. These problems are accelerated. And a lot of people have to reckon with it. But a lot of people, you know, like there's so many, like, well, how would you feel if you have, like, shut your eyes to all of it and then and have to you know, reckon with everything Trump has done? Had to reckon with, oh, coronavirus is real. Uh, people are being put out of the streets. That's a lot to deal with. Like, we're, mm -hmm. like, the people who are aware, even the people who aren't aware, like, we're going through a series of traumatic events. Yeah. And yeah. if you want to, and it's very hard to, eyes to one of those things, let alone all of those things, whether you're looking at it from a point of view of faith, religion, or like just your general exception. Yeah, you saying a whole bunch of things. Wow, you guys are still going on. Sorry. Duh, girl, what you did? <laughs> this girl live popped up out here like the Easter Bunny. What, girl? Listen. Sorry, my friend came over with pork belly and mushrooms. And oh, like, yeah. You know how That's I am. Ah. Uh, all right, Liz. You've said 
I appreciate you for coming through, and I also appreciate for the plate that you're sending to me that I know is already in the mail. Shout out to you, and shout out to my homies at USPS. Go hard, my boys. Anyway, I will say this, though. It is yes. almost that time. We're not quite done yet. I have, like, two more things I want to discuss. Really, it's just a continuation of this last thing. And then there's one thing. We're going to end it on a pos kind of positive note because I don't want anybody to leave this thing depressed. You know what I'm saying? And sad because we <laughs> talked about a whole bunch of 2020 as looking stuff. Liz. Uh, we have already discussed the idea of faith over fear when it comes to wearing a mask and why we are issues with it. But now I want to restart that conversation in a different perspective. People don't wear Can masks. Can I bring something quickly up with that? Absolutely. Please go ahead. So, okay. So interesting, like, point of view from me living in California. There's been, like, this huge, like, movement in California in terms of, like, anti-maxers and a lot of people just, like, wanting Governor Newsom to resign. Like, it's a huge movement. Like, they are protesting outside. And let me tell you right now, it's hot. It <laughs> is so hot. <laughs> it do be hot. <laughs> like, there is sweat where sweat should not be. Yuck! <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, you know, these folks are serious. They are outside protesting in this heat. Mm -hmm. for Governor Newsom to resign because they don't want to wear masks. Because, like, California is, like, unlike Georgia, because most of y'all do live in Georgia, California is still in a lock, semi-lockdown phase. Yeah, they are. Like, a lot of, like, things are not open near at all to the degree of Georgia. Is. <clears throat> so it's very interesting, ha like, ha living in a state like that and then watching Georgia just, like, Georgia it up. <laughs> As we do. I don't do. even know what Georgia's doing, like... I'm confused. Yeah. I was clowning around. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, uh, I feel, I genuinely, I feel insane because I feel like I'm, I'm like the last person yeah. on this earth taking this seriously. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, dude, like, like, you see like all these people on like Instagram and stuff like going out and I'm just like, what are you doing? Dicking around oh in public. My God. I feel like I, I almost miss April, or at least everyone, you know, visibly was following the rules. Because mm -hmm. right now, I'm in the same boat as so like, I feel crazy, like, <clears throat> at every level. So, like, oh. Yeah. Just the manic pent of people. energy is wild. But it's not, it's not just like, you know, like, because like, on one hand, you have like an individual level where you're like, half my Instagram had their heart on it. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, that wasn't, a, like, that was never, you know, in question. But it's like, and I can't even be so mad at the individual level. It's like, like, remember all those ads that we saw where we really went from, all in this together to you know come out here and die for like our dugarita or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, okay, wait. This is tangential. This is almost okay. Yuck. As an advertising major, mm -hmm. I've never hated this <laughs> any like the <laughs> hatred I feel for the ads that have come out in the last six months. I have never felt more seething anger. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Every time I see a new one, I just like, I'm just like, make it stop. She's like foaming at the mouth. <laughs> They're playing the big bucks. This is the big bucks. They're playing the advertisers at their companies. And like, they can't <sighs> think of anything more unique. And I'm kind of disappointed by that. <clears throat> just like, stop reminding me <laughs> that, that we're yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say something else, but Lorenzo, you really, you you reminded me of something I want to talk about so much more. Uh, just so everybody knows there's a mystery here. What I was gonna do is people didn't wear a mask because of their faith. Or other people were didn't wear a mask because they thought it was infringing upon their civil liberties. Um, that was yeah. what I was gonna talk about next is how do y'all see this as far as civil liberties? But I actually want to do something else act instead <laughs> for the next few minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, just so everybody understands, the difference between civil rights and civil liberties rights protect you from your fellow citizens liberties protect you from the government your civil liberties are things that you as a citizen are allowed to do that the government cannot disallow you to do rights are things that you're allowed to do that the government will keep other citizens from disallowing you to do a lot of people don't get that distinction whole lot of supreme court cases have been decided by that difference we'll get to that later probably not hey, can, you, can you explain that one more time slowly for the dumb people in the back <laughs> <laughs> I was not dedicated enough neurons to I will explain it for the, I will say that for the people who did not understand it on the first round, I will restate it. Your civil liberties as a citizen of any, of any government, authority, nation, wherever, 
your civil liberties are things that you are allowed to do because you are a citizen. The government cannot infringe upon those liberties. I mean, to some extent, because no right is absolute. An example of your civil liberties, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, assembly, petition, press, the entire First Amendment, most of the amendments, those are civil liberties. You as a citizen are allowed to do this and the government cannot tell you that you can't with a lot of exceptions. Somebody calm law and paid attention. Look, man. <laughs> I never took that class, but I I, I have a, I I do have internet. I I watch a lot of education. There's a degree education in Twitterology. Twitter. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm trying to uh I'm trying my hardest to uh to uh inherit crash course from John Green. Um, application still pending. Anyway, we'll go about that later. <laughs> but then there's civil rights. When you think of civil rights, you think of the civil rights movement. Your fellow citizen cannot keep you from applying or working at a place because of the color of your skin. There are a lot of protected parties, race, sex, gender identification, sexual orientation, creed, national origin, faith and religion and all that. With your citizens, if your fellow citizen can keep you from doing it, you are protected because it is a right. It is a civil right. And so if let's just say if you're a same sex couple and you want to, I don't know, you want to be a same sex couple, you know, and then there are your neighbors saying you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? You have civil rights. But if you want to go down to the street and protest and then the governor's like, no, nah, don't do that. Well, you have civil liberties. That's the difference between those two. One protects you from the government. The other protects you from your fellow citizens. See, the way that you could be a part of political talk the way you could run this, I feel like that's your calling. Don't don't say yeah. nice things to me. Not this late at night. <laughs> it, it won't happen again. Honestly, it won't happen again. I I appreciate that. And while TikTok is still a thing, um, shout out to my homies at Bite Dance. I I mean I'll look into that. I've been I've been thinking about you know I do have a blog and I've been thinking about writing that and I'm thinking about having like a second podcast where I just talk to myself about things I feel. Next thing you know, I'll become like a, a right wing radio host or whatever. We'll get back to that later. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Last thing. I don't think written comm should be something you dedicate time to. I think audio comm and fast bites would be a more effective way for your time. Thank you. Uh, personal note, sidetrack, I guess. What I really want to get into is political communications. I work in the private, excuse me, the public sector right now in communications, marketing communications specifically. Um, I really want to do this and I do it for the state government, but I want to do it for elected people because I feel like that's just even more interesting and it gets me closer to the action. <laughs> I like my job though. But the thing I want to talk about though. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I mean, there's <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people. I, I'll say this. My thing is, and because we got nine minutes until the game starts, and I got two entire things I want to talk about real quick. The first thing is um, the whole unity messaging. It's empty. It's lame. And this is probably just going to be a rant for me personally. I hate it. It's annoying. I shout out Jocelyn. Foaming at the mouth. I want it to kill everybody. Not really. I'm not a violent person. I just want it to attack the wall. Why? Because it is so <laughs> aggravating to me when I go on Facebook or I'm driving down the street and I see on like a, a, a sign from some, some multi-billion dollar conglomerate or something. And they're like, unity, stand together. We're all in this as one. That is so uh, stupid. Why? Because you're not saying anything. You're not saying anything. You're not you're not advocating for a policy. There's no platform. There's no there's no political politic you're not there's no candidate. You're not saying do anything. You're just saying stand together. What does that mean, Jimmy? What are we doing standing together? You want me to go out into the street and hold hands with you and we'll just get shot up by the Is that it? Is that the whole extent? I think it's making one of the hard way. So it's it's on now, uh, Ollie. Because that's that's the greatest person in the world. He's saying that. Ollie, like, you're like, gross. Go ahead, Lorenzo. Uh, like, <laughs> <I feel> like, <laughs> so many people in power, and this ranges from, you know, like, companies that want to see us die to, like, every celebrity who wanted to see a magic or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, we are not in the same boat. We are in the same storm, but some people are just chilling on their yachts, and some people are, like, on <clears> earth <throat> in the ocean. Yeah. And I feel like by pretending that we're all in together, really oversimplifying it. And I'm not really sure who this is supposed to convince. You know, sure, like, you know, like, I'm not sure who has been convinced of this. Yeah, I was, a uh, uh, shot to, uh, I went to UGA. I'll go ahead and let y'all know that. Went to the University oh, of Georgia. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, our season opener 
was last Saturday, and all the players got together and they wore, I don't know if it was a jersey or a t-shirt or something, they had this, this giant unity messaging. It was nice, whatever, not very, it, uh, it's not supposed to be controversial, obviously, that's the point. And people in the chat saying all this other stuff, I mean, and they knelt, they knelt during the opening kickoff, not even during the national anthem, during the national, during the opening kickoff, uh, or something like that. And everybody in the comments was mad and everything. And I'm like, cool, whatever. You can be mad, but that's not even the reason why I'm mad. I'm mad because nobody can explain to me what unity means. Like, am mm -hmm. I supposed to be nice to people who want to see me suffer? Like, uh, uh, there are people that exist that want me to be dead because they would be better off if I was not alive or living in their neighborhood, so on and so forth. What does unity mean in that context? What are you saying for us to stand together and do? I literally, I, okay, so this morning I was listening. So Maren Morris, she's a country music artist, and she released a new song today. You know, t say, doing the same, like, like tired saying of divided we, divided. Uh, we fall. What's the fall. saying? Divided like we fall, fall united we stand, something like that. And it's so, mm -hmm. it's such a cliche thing that means nothing. Yes. Like you divided, we fall. The reason we're divided is that one of one of us is fighting for better rights and better equality and equity for mm -hmm. all of us, while the other wants to actually remove rights mm -hmm. and make things worse or like just keep things the way they are. So no, I can't be unified with you. Sorry, that's not how that works. Yeah. To quote so, all the memes on Twitter and Tumblr, it is one thing to have mm -hmm. different opinions on pizza toppings. It's another thing to have different opinions about human rights. Yeah, like. What's the name of the artist? I Maren Morris. Oh, okay. She just released a new song today. I'm actually a good fa big fan of her. Like, okay, I'm a I'm a fan of her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and like, but, like I think a lot of country artists really suffer through this state of like, you know, I was also reading an article recently about how like as um as social media, anyone who works in the social media, whether TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, etc., you know, staying out of politics now is a disadvantage to your brand. God, yes. Yeah. Versus yeah, before absolutely. where you, it could have been a yeah, thing. For sure. So, like, all these artists are, like, so they're, you know, production company is saying, you know, how are you going to respond to this? And they're saying these, like, just, just lifeless things. That's, the song itself was just lifeless. Like, you, it, it's, it's, huh? Oh, sorry, you reminded me of a celebrity on Twitter. Someone, I can't remember the name, because I don't care who he is. But someone, <laughs> a bunch of friends asked him if he could use his platform to speak oh, about uh, the BLM. From 21 Pilots. Another That's band. him. Yeah. Like, another band he just band gave this like asinine oast, yeah. which made me furious, made a lot of people furious. And or, yeah, <laughs> I get angry thinking about it because it's like even saying nothing, while not good for your band, it's brand, is still preferable to just and asking yourself about something that's important yeah like these people have money they can hire somebody to just tell me what i'm supposed to say man if you don't know somebody can give you spark notes bro like god no to charities. bro i'm here for it exactly how we're is, out here in the age of like no type of apologies how are we not like at least why <laughs> no mm -hmm. you know like at least put a little bit of effort i don't know like this, I just thinking about like the like celebrity singing, just a very you know. Oh God! At the beginning with like the with the yeah. Like, you know, oh yeah. my God! That was so infuriating. That was so uh, stupid. That's what I'm, Gross as hell. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to like some people are just looking out. It's like things are rough for for them. Things are not what they wanted. But like they're who was it? They who was it? The, yeah. Sorry, guys. No, we're gonna say. Who was it that was complaining? that like she had to like stay in her yeah, uh, mansion quarantined yes bro i was like are you, oh, really like ayo <laughs> like ayo <laughs> ayo <-Y -O>, question mark <laughs> <laughs> bro <Phil. laughs> i'm real ayo <laughs> bro <laughs> Uh, I will, before we get to closing thoughts, closing statements, closing arguments and anything, well, I ask everybody, you know, one thing they want to say last or one thing they want us to know. I will want to read um, something reported a few minutes ago from CNN Politics. Not sponsored by CNN, not saying they're my favorite news source or anything, but they do have a live thread, like an actual RSS feed, so that's why I'm pulling my sources from them. This is an article written by CNN's Shelby Lynn Erdman. 
uh, this is the headline. Trump is, quote, in a race, end quote, against coronavirus, Regeneron uh, CEO says. President Trump is now, quote, in a race, end quote, against coronavirus. The CEO of biotechnology, uh, excuse me, biotechnology company Regeneron said after the drug maker provided a dose of its experimental antibody treatment to the president on Friday. Shout out to you, Liz. Quote, he is in a race where his immune system is racing against the virus. And if the virus wins, you can have dire consequences, obviously. And what our antibodies do is we make it a fair fight. End quote. That was by Dr. Leonard Schliefer told cnn's wolf blitzer uh that's the first two it's a pretty short article but those are the first two paragraphs um i think that's very i think that's relevant news it's not technically saying anything about what's going on right now it is just telling us that this is obviously a serious situation uh we'll pay attention to it as it progresses absolutely please go ahead a science-based response sometimes i you know i hate the way the, that doctor responded because sometimes i think they make they treat the sometimes i think doctors and scientific communities communicators treat the public as they're stupid yes they do. like you can it's like mm-hmm. the problem with like how people don't understand why like something like hydrochloroquine would not work like I explain don't... to them why it wouldn't work versus just saying it like <clears throat> say these statements that mean nothing mm-hmm. oh the, the you know by giving him these antibodies we make it a fair fight no you do not make it a fair fight because <laughs> there's a lot more involved with that process mm-hmm. like that's a and it's like, you know, you're talking about how, like, you know, his camp will respond to this and stuff like that. By saying a statement like this, and it comes to, like, why there's already so much public dissent towards vaccines, like, they need to stop treating the public like they're dumb. I completely Make agree. true statements, because science is not a cure-all. Like, science, there's no 100% effective treatment. And, like, a lot of people don't understand that because we say statements like this that make it seem like it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's magic. So, like, that's, sorry, yeah, that's just something that irritates me because, like, I, it, it, yeah, anyone who knows me more probably knows why I'm so fresh, even fr- more frustrated by that statement than, um, than just, yeah. Now, Liz, who is not Luna, if you'd like to just, you know, really quickly give us some of your credentials, you are from, I don't know, I'm not going to say you're from Georgia. You and I went to the same school. Literally all of us in this chat went to the same institution, but you are now across the country on the other end of, on the other coast, essentially, in the Pacific Coast, in California. Why the heck are you there? Well, you know, I told myself, I oh, like God. I, you, you can probably hear, I, I do enjoy science, but, mm-hmm. so I'm in, I'm currently... I'm in a PhD program for biomedical sciences, and I, well, my pro, my lab studies vaccines. So we study vaccines in a very unique way, but that that's here and there or there. I don't want to to search the lab, um, but like, I have a problem. Like, I'm deciding whether or not to drop my PhD. I think I don't care about making it public because I think my impact on science can be done in a different way i respect that so which is why like i get frustrated by certain things like this because like so much is done in the lab that never reaches the people and i'm a very people oriented person like the driver behind my career choice was is not me i could care less about myself it's other people Mm -hmm. so yeah so I, I, I generally try to make sure like I understand a lot about a lot of science because you don't need to get into the need degree details, but if you can communicate science in an effective and true way, that would be more beneficial to the public than saying these like catch all statements yeah. that you wanna quickly mm-hmm. go through it without letting the public mm-hmm. understand. That's why you don't want more public dissent towards science. When someone lies to you, you automatically Every, when someone lies to you, like in a relationship or any relationship you have, no matter what happens, even if they say sorry, everything they say to you after that, you take less seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's just how it works. So you have to be very careful with how you say things to the public because you don't want you don't want them to not take science seriously. Which is why the Center for Disease Controls and Prevention has they have been hiring like crazy since COVID broke out in the United States. They're hiring specifically for one job that they keep hiring more people for, and that is public health communications. Mm. And I feel like Darsta has not necessarily experience in that role, but what the heck are you in school for? 
I am going to be a stripper when I graduate. <laughs> All right, listen. <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, it's been real. Thank y'all so much for coming. My computer just died. Listen, get that bread, okay? Get that bread. Get the get the get the. Get the bills you need to pay. Okay. <laughs> no, but really, I'm in school to do uh, health media and communications. I would never want to work at the CDC. I just want to say, well, you know what? I'm not gonna say that on here. But um, <laughs> never know. I don't know. I just feel like there are better ways to help the community than to work for a government organization, especially one that is so controlled by whoever is in office and the administration and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you guys have paid attention to the house. The CDC has been reporting coronavirus, but it changes. Yes. Is, yeah, like okay. it changes off of what is um, what, what is for the, the administration. So that's really like messed up in my opinion. I can never really work for a company that, that yeah. is under that much control off of what you can and can't put out. Um, and that's just like one reason, but there's a slew of them. I know Elizabeth knows. Um, I talk, we talk about this often. We talk about this often, but yeah, and I, one of the things that just to clarify, one of the things that uh, Dario was mentioning is how the CDC, like the CIA, is supposed to be an independent government agency, not supposed to fall under a specific department or the leadership of whoever is in the Oval Office. That's not necessarily how it worked during the pandemic. And Trump decided that you're that hospitals across the country will stop reporting to the CDC <laughs> and instead report to the Trump controlled federal department of health and human services and that caused a number of issues a whole lot of different ways and so that's just just something that you should be aware of yeah it's really like messed up when you think about it because you create this separate entity so that when something like this arises it could be like the leading like the leading advisor for something like this and then like we actually have a pandemic and it's time to use the center for disease control They're and useless. right really useless so anyways there's my two cents about that. But yeah, I'm studying health media communications. And I just wanted them to explain what they're doing in school right now in that these are not people that I just yanked off the street smoking crack rock, anything like that. That is anything wrong if you smoking crack rock. That's your own decision. I, I That ain't up to me. That's up to you. I'm just saying I, I, the people that are here are here for a very particular reason because these people know what they're talking about to some degree. And some of us are paid to know what we're talking about. Not me, obviously. <laughs> you see the shirt I got on. But still, there are some people out there that know what they're talking about. And so final closing thoughts. Uh, we're going to start back with Phil. Just what do you want the people to know? Uh, how are you looking forward to the election? You know, just last, just closing thoughts. Have you enjoyed yourself here? What are you eating tonight? Whatever. Whatever you want to say. Uh, it's kind of hard to, because November is going to be like, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, November's going to be an interesting time, but also, like, new consoles release in November, so I'm, like, also excited for November. <laughs> <laughs> Such a fill answer. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I love that. All right. Uh, Dar Dario? Well, you know, if you don't already have a plan to go vote, make sure you look one up. Uh, if you're voting by the ballot, make sure you look. I don't know if you guys saw, but um, in Texas, they're, they are... Decreasing the amount of places you can turn in an absentee ballot to one per county. Yep. And Texas is a really big state. So, like, that's pretty messed up. So, I'm just, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like that all over the country. So, just like make sure if you're going to vote, like, regardless if it's an absentee ballot or in person, you make a plan. But, like, plan to go vote today. Like, do it today, right now. Go do it. Yeah. Retweet. Uh, Jock. Oh. <laughs> in the presidential election but also remember to vote locally and be active locally um just because the election is literally a month from now doesn't mean that's the end all be all of what you can do to uh be a contributing part of the u.s i feel that um interviewed a woman back in 2016 right before trump got elected you know the night that will forever live in infamy and i was oh. speaking with this woman in my uh county and I was asking her, yeah, how do you feel about the national election? And she was like, yeah, that's cool. That's interesting and everything. But in my opinion, all politics is local. It affects me mm -hmm. more every single day, like the roads that get built, the schools my kids can go to and everything. So Jocelyn, echo that 100 percent. Pay attention to your local elections. That's right. Literally right there in your home. So, uh, Liz. Well, yes, go vote. Also, you know, please don't become science dissenters. Mm. There are some of us who are trying our hardest <laughs> to make sure that we can create a healthier and more equitable future for all of us worldwide. And like, you know, 
yeah, just tr- tr- really, really focus on your local elections also in terms of like making sure the viewpoints of your local electors match up with who you are. Actually, I'm actually going to recommend another thing. So I follow these YouTubers called um, Good Mythical Morning, and they have a website. <laughs> <Yes>. called- ah! <laughs> They have a website called Vote Like a Beast that actually lets you, like, you put in your points of view. They ask you questions, you put in your points of view about them, and they actually give you recommendations for local and national elections for who you more aligned with. And I think it's a great resource because sometimes, like, you know, with local elections, there's just so many people, and you're like, when you have a lot of options for something, it makes, it just overwhelms the brain. That's just how it is. So, like, I recommend this website for anyone in the United States who is looking to vote. Um, yeah, but like keep just try to try to be open. We're young and also like I all of us are young. We're just starting out in our fields. Like I truly do believe we can have impact in making sure um making sure that we can create a better future and hopefully we don't get fatigued. It's always good. I'm trying to force myself also to just step take a step back sometimes from everything and just take time to myself and take time to be with my friends that share good political views, of course, to just relax in a less political environment. But yeah, that's my closing thoughts. Thank you. Uh, Lorenzo. Uh, yeah, so I guess kind of repeating what everyone was saying, uh, do something kind for yourself, do something kind for yourself. You know, check your local budget. You know, in addition to everything about uh, but like, check your local budget because you know like, that is, I feel like in so much of talking about politics with the family, it always com- comes back to like, but it doesn't matter. And nothing affects you more than what happens, and you know your money's already going somewhere. That's all. I feel that, yeah. Uh, when Somnia, please. Uh, well, I just want to say thank you, everyone. This was cathartic. Um, and um, yeah, go vote. Wear your mask. Fuck twelve. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Yeah, that's not for me. Uh, yeah. Fun fact, bro. Just so everybody's aware. Uh, me, Jock, Phil, and Lorenzo were literally here talking about a road trip we we're gonna take, and then this got started, and Darielle and Liz came through. Before Darielle and Liz got here, uh. When Somnia literally just popped up out of nowhere while we're, while we're looking, planning the event. And so that was, wow, completely unexpected, completely welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'll say that. And now I guess my final thoughts is, well, thank each and every one of you for coming through. It's really been a pleasure, not just, you know, the audience, but also y'all here. It's been fun to talk about this. I, no matter how much I talk about this, I feel like I never get enough chance to talk about this. I'm usually just fighting with, with bastards on Facebook and I just, I never get the chance to really say what I want to say. So I, <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh God, the smile on my face is terrifying. Anyway, um, if, if there's anything... Don't don't listen to Dario. She's crazy. If, if there's anything <laughs> I want to leave you all with, it is, of course, register to vote and then go vote. Absolutely do that every election, every single election. And let me tell you why. Don't just vote because you think your vote will change the outcome of the election. If you vote, you are part of the electorate. This is especially to you young people. The reason why you need to vote, even if your candidate always loses, is because you represent another vote that is has to be counted when these people run again. All right. You are job security for all of these people in Congress, for all of these people in in your state capital, for all these people in your local commissioners board and city council. If they don't think that you're going to vote, they don't care about you. All right. It doesn't matter if your vote changes the outcome of the election. Nobody cares about young people because young people don't go vote. If young people vote and you become a significant portion of the electorate, they have to listen to you. There's literally no alternative because if they, if you're not going to vote for them, they're not going to have a job. All right. Vote. Even if you lose, you have to vote. You have to be represented. You have to be a part of the be a part of the democratic process. Do not shy away from politics. I know it makes people so uncomfortable. I respect that. I'll never not understand that. But do not shy away from it. Get involved with it. Ask questions. 
listen more than anything else you know what i'm saying it is not a crime to change your mind if you felt one way on monday you can feel some way differently wednesday and feel completely different in the first two days on friday that's fine that's part of being a human being you're allowed to grow you're allowed to change you're allowed to evolve that's the entire point get involved if you can volunteer volunteer if you can't volunteer that's fine just register to vote and vote and encourage your friends and family to do the same thing wash your hands wear a mask and please do something nice for somebody when you have a chance if you don't do anything else just do something nice be a human being and share your humanity with everyone who has the opportunity to be blessed by it that is all i have to say and thank you all so much for joining this has been we don't have a name for this show i don't know what's going to call this uh but according to my twitch let me look up what did i call this thing emergency broadcast oh man actually i will keep that <laughs> we're gonna keep that actually <laughs> this has been uh episode one uh or edition one of emergency broadcast the social implications of trump's COVID diagnosis wow that's crazy man. Okay.